Hello and welcome to the Stock Planner channel. Today I'd like to talk to you about a cheap technical company trading at around $24 that you may want to put on your watch list, Xerox. But first, we're swing traders and our job is to find these major sw swings. Major swings swing up right now. This is a zigzag indicator and it's perfect. It always predicts the tops and bottoms, but how it does that? It looks to the future. Right now, the zigzag does not know what it's doing, but it looks like it might be going up. And since you can't use a zigzag as an indicator, because it's a future looking thing and we don't have that ability, we must find other indicators that are, don't look into the future to, to predict what may happen. This is the MACD. It's, it's showing that it might go up. This is just stochastic coming down the round, stochastic RSI. When it comes back around, crosses over the the 20, it's saying go up. And this is the RSI. RSI, when it's below the 30 and comes back around, it's predicting. So we find an indicator that, that maybe predict these peaks and valleys in order to win at swing trading. And when we do our back test today, I back test when all three basically are within about four days apart. But generally, you could use the RSI. When it comes below and comes back around, does it does it predict these swings? It did there. It predicted a little minor one there, and it predicted this one. So you could use the RSI, but what I tend to do is use all three. When they, all three occur within four days apart, I take a single. The Stock Planner channel is about education. We're primarily swing traders. And we try to learn from each other. I'm not your financial advisor, but I think you can learn a lot from me and from others. Let's get started. A piece of news yesterday was that President Biden signs an order to crack down on big tech. In other words, big tech is eating eating the smaller companies and preventing competition. He's taking 72 actions in order to crack down on those big companies preventing competition. Well, Joe Biden's order will probably give some pain for the big tech. So perhaps maybe we should look at a little tech. But I believe there's going to be some headwinds for both. Amazon killed Parler, which was a free speech platform. And so I'm not sure what, what wins the Congress is going to have for these big tech companies. But I'm sure that censorship is going to be play a big, big role in how easy these companies will be able to gobble up small companies. People fear the control that these big companies have and so they want to take them down a little peg. I personally do not like a lot of government crackdown, but his order wants to boost competition across the board and crack down on the anti-competitive practices of big tech. The, the fact that Amazon was able to remove Parler from their cloud computing platform and virtually kill a platform that was competing with Facebook and remove that competition was not a very good and fair competitive pack practice. It needs to be looked at. But you have a company like Amazon that keeps gobbling up all kinds of companies because they have a lot of cash. The rich, one of the richest companies in the world. The biggest company in the world. I, for one, like to see a lot of little companies competing with the big companies. I do not want to see one, two, or three companies controlling our internet and communications, but it's looking like that. CNBC states that the order could provide some relief to small and medium-sized businesses that have complained of the allegedly crippling grip big tech firms have, such as Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, but also I think companies like Microsoft and Netflix and Telsa, these are all data companies as well and big and technical companies. Tesla's not just a, a car company. Are they getting too big? Amazon is into everything. It needs to have companies that compete against it. I think Xerox could be one of those companies. It's an old company. Been around for a long, long time. It may have lost its competitive edge, but still around. Might be a company that's good for the recession, inflation situation that we have. Finding a company that has staying power. In our case, a cheap company. Apple? In the good trading and swinging stock, and you have to catch these major swings and find indicators that do it. But Telsa, $656 per share, you can't trade 100 shares of it. You need to have 
$65,000. Contrast that with Amazon, $3,000, nearly $4,000 a share. You can't trade these big companies with a small account. So in our case, we want to find a cheaper, cheaper stock. Now, I want to tell you that I do like Apple and Microsoft, the swing trade. Microsoft's trading at around two, nearly $300 a share. And I do like to trade options in it to get it for a little cheaper. But I do like the Microsoft and Apple. And I haven't traded the other big guys, Amazon and Google much. Or Telcel. Back to Xerox. And you can see that's a good swing in, swing in stock. It's an electronic technology computer firm. According to TradingView, it's got a buy rating. And TradingView is a free package out there. A free version gives you three indicators. I'm using four here. And a paid version is very cheap. The free version gives you one alert. Because that is our conclusion here. We set alert for Xerox for a buy at a later date. Or the paid version, first level, you get 10 alerts. That's enough for a swing trader. One alert is enough for a beginner. Now let's go to Finviz and look at some fundamentals. Now you have to remember that being a swing trader, we're trying to catch these technical swings. So a swing trader is primarily 75% technical trader using indicators and charts and price change. But I believe you have to pick stocks that you know a little bit about. And that means checking out the fundamentals. Here's a chart of Xerox. And you can see from November to mid-March, it was on a general upswing. And now since mid-March, it's generally on a downturn. This stock has a PE of 22 and a forward PE that's positive. This company is profitable. It's optional, shortable, but its recommendation, according to Finviz, is a sell. Plenty of volume, but the target price is 19, 19, 19. Well, this thing is trading at 24, so that would be lower than 24. And so that would be, if you believe Finviz, and by the way, the, the target price is produced by some analysts. If you believe the analysts, this is stock will go down. Let's find another analyst. Let's get a second opinion. Looking at tip ranks. We see it's trading at 24. Analyst 20. Hmm. High at 24, which is it's at current, currently there at 24. It has a sell rating. An overall ranking of 5. It's moderate. Fundamentals are not good. This chart looks decent to me. And earnings is August 2nd. Not a lot of news. So the second doctor says it will go down. Tip ranks. Let's find another doctor. Looking at Simply View, we have Xerox trading at 2411. It says it's undervalued at that price. And the future value or fair value should be 55. 82 is 56. Now here's a doctor I like. 55, 82. Microsoft is undervalued at $277. And it has a future value or fair value of 325. These are numbers I like. Again, if you believe the analyst, if you believe simply Wall Street, if you believe Finviz. So we like Microsoft and we like Xerox. Microsoft's a little more expensive, trading at 200, oh, nearly $300. And Xerox, poor little Xerox, is trading at measly $24. According to Simply Wall Street, Microsoft should be trading at 325 based on its PE and free cash flow, free cash flow, and Xerox should be trading at 56. And if you bought based on that, and if you believe those analysts and you believe Simply View, and you had thousand dollars to invest, one thousand dollars on a ten thousand dollar account, which is five thousand dollars in margin at five, you invest one thousand dollars, you could buy. Three, three, oh, nearly four shares of Microsoft and 41 shares of Xerox. And at the end of the year, if you believe that, you'd have 169 and wow, 1300 bucks. But it doesn't matter. We don't, we're not buy and hold anyway. We're swing traders. So let's take a look at 
and do some back testing on Xerox. Using a program called OmniBroker, I have programmed my MACD, Stochastic RSI, and the RSI set at 4 to all occur within 4 bars of each other to take a trade. I have set my back tester for $10,000. I'm taking all only long trades because I'm going to get a long bias. I have my stops set at 10% and I have no profit target. And I'm going to do this trade for, for 18 trades, 18 bars, 18 days. In other words, I'm trying to see, once I get a single, will the single stay true for 18 days? And the reason why I do that is I want to trade it, we may want to trade an option, but but I want to have lots of time to make a decision on getting out early as well. So I want, once I get a single, I want to see if it's a good single for at least 18 days. So I've taken a profit. I could take profit at 5%, which I do a lot, okay, but, and that's why it's set at 5 But and the reason why I take it at 10% stop loss is because when I do an option, I usually try to buy it at a bargain. So I usually try to buy it at 10% less than what it's trading at today. Doing a back test, and we get these trades. And there's my profit, the number of bars, the dates of the entry and exit. And we can look at a summary. Net profit, risk adjusted return because... Swing traders are in and out. You have a chance to, to use your money elsewhere. So the risk adjusted is only t taking into account when you're using the money, using your money. Um, and that's why it's higher usually than the annual return. Annual return is buy and hold. Seven trades. Every time you make a trade, you're going to make six, $36, $37. Every time you place a trade throughout the year, you got $37 in your pocket. You have four winners and three losers. Putting that information in the, my little spreadsheet, you have 57% win rate. There's your risk adjusted and there is your final number. And doing the same for Microsoft, you do eight trades. The risk adjusted APR is 50%, which is about the same. And their net is 310. This is investing the same $1,000 per trade with a $10,000 account. $1,000 per trade, $10,000 account. Both, everything, that's, that's what's the same here. This is a buy and hold, and this is in and out. And you can use your money for other trades. We're swing traders, so we don't care about this. But that's, but if you believed simply Wall Street, buy and hold would definitely be the, the best. Both stocks investing in the same $1,000 appear to be very similar and very close. Your preference. You want to trade a cheaper stock, or you want to trade the best in the business, Microsoft. I'm going to trade both. So I believe if you're looking for a cheaper stock, Xerox is, is one that you might want to consider. Tip Ranks says it's going to be around $20. Finviz says $19. And Simply Wall Street says $55. Who do you believe? Well, I believe that is support, uh, resistance, and this is support. And I believe it's going to be consolidating around here for a few days. But because of the news article, the technicals are going to go down a little bit over the next couple of days. And that's where I think a buy is warranted. What we'd like to see is the RSI that come down below the 30 and come back around. And it could take up to two weeks to do that. If I think it's going down, do I want to go ahead and short this stock? No, I, have a, I do have a positive bias on technicals and the technical sector for the next 10 years and even if we have a recession and some inflation i do believe the technicals will do well certain technicals will do well so what to do we are going to double click on the rsi and we're going to add an alert on the rsi and we're going to wait for it to cross up from 30. we only do it once and we're going to have it sent to my cell phone this is the nice thing about swing trading you can wait you can be patient you can see what the the market has in store for us and remember just recently we had a, a bad day on the market so let's let's wait let's relax set the alert and we can go to about our our day we can go back to work and keep our day job we can relax positive on xerox i think it's up for the long term but we're going to wait 
the buy and we have an alert set waiting for it to cross up come down below and cross up we want rsi to come below and cross up please like and subscribe this video don't do what this guy did he followed everything that this guy did and said he's not a happy trader do your own due diligence do your own work learn it and win happy trading catching a flip xerox cheap stop to put on your watch list